Yo, 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 what's going on my mini notch programmers? It's Real Touch GML here back with another Java video. I believe this is our 11th video. And, uh, and today we're going to be working with level design. So let me go ahead and run the game now and, uh, and we can kind of see what we've got here. So, you know, we've got this, this player that we have, you know, we've got this, this solid collision, you know, this four way collision and we've got a camera going and we're moving around. But a platformer, what is a platformer if you don't have an awesome level to uh, to explore and and uh, play in? So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, before I actually learn this method of doing it, I would actually hand code in, hard code, every single block's position. Now, this can get a little difficult if you're going to want the very sophisticated, you know, there's ledges here, and then there's going to be coins and monsters, you know, and there's a trap here, and so on and so forth. This can get very, very time consuming and very, very complicated. Uh, so, what we're going to do is set up a system where we can literally draw out our level and have it translate into the game. Right, so to do this, let's go ahead and go into uh, a paint editor here. Now I'm using paint.net. You can use actual paint, Photoshop, doesn't really matter. You're just gonna need something that you can draw with and uh, be able to draw pixels. So we're gonna actually draw out our level. So you know, say we wanted a level where there's a floor here and then you know there's blocks and walls and, uh, and coins that we can add later on. That's what we're gonna be doing. So first off, you need to go ahead and create a new uh, file here, and it needs to be a file of the power of two. So um, you know, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six, uh, five twelve, um, ten twenty-four. You know what I'm talking about. So it it just needs to be something like that. So I'm just gonna say five twelve by five twelve. Now again, you're gonna get an error if you don't actually. Uh, make it, uh, you know, the uh, by the power of two dimensions. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase the uh, increase the zoom level here and go all the way to the top left corner because that's where we're going to start. And here, as you can see, now I'm just drawing. And what we're doing here is basically every pixel that we draw is going to be an actual block that is represented in our game. And we're going to do this basically by a, uh, we're going to create a method that takes this image, reads the colors, and then depending on that color, will present a, uh, a block or a player or whatever we'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and pop into the calculator here. And basically since our width is 800, we're going to divide that by 32 and that right here we get 25 so that means we can have 25 blocks spanning across the top there and then I believe 600 divided by 32 is like 19 18.75 so we'll go down to uh, we'll say 18 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 there we go and I'm not too worried about the width because we do have the larger room. So let's go ahead and just create this here. And now we can actually start drawing out a level. So, you know, let's have like this cool little thing. And then, you know, we can have drops that this, that the uh, player can sort of jump on. We'll have some ledges. Um, and then let's also uh, have the color blue completely blue and this will be where the player actually starts so let's have them start up on the ledge here and I actually put it uh, one pixel above just so uh, you know we can I don't know I, that's just what I did and uh, yeah let's I mean I guess we can no I don't like that let's have like that or something yes okay and then we can have all right, I'm 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 getting too I'm having too much fun here. So this is gonna be our level, right? And again, later on we can actually add in coins, enemies, all of that fun stuff. But this is gonna be our level. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it, uh, and then put it into our game here. So this will be neon platformer. No, 
Um, what did we call it? Ah, yes, we did do Neon Platformer, except we need to create a new folder because I thought we had load images before. So, all right, so in order to load this image, we're actually going to need to do some stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder from our Neon Platformer called Res. And it's very important that you need to right click your project, go to Properties, Java Build Path, Add Class Folder, and then hit this Res and press OK. All right, there you go. So now we can go ahead and, where is it? We can save it into our res folder as level.png. There we go. So there is our level. So now we're going to actually need to, uh, now that we've got the level, we, you know, we've got this, uh, this file created in sitting inside our res folder here, we're going to need to create a class that is going to load this image. So I'm going to just go to the window here, new class, and I'm going to call this buffered image loader. And basically what, what this is going to consist of is basically we're going to create a private buffered image called image, control shift O to import the buffered image. And then, and then we're going to say public buffered image load image. It's going to take a string of path. And here we're basically just going to say image equals image io dot read get class dot get resource path. And then we're going to return that image. And then we need to surround and try and catch. Alrighty. So basically this class, we're just going to use it for loading images. This code right here will load the image of any given path that we, that we give it. So let's go back into the game here. Let's go ahead and create a private buffered image level equals null. Control shift though to import the buffered image. And then here we're going to say, uh, do, 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 where do we want to put this? We'll put this right here. No, I'll put it up here. I'm gonna create a new local buffered image loader file or, or object type inside of our init method, which means that we can only use it inside the init method. It's not global to the class. And here we can just say level equals loader dot load image forward slash level dot PNG. And this right here, we can even comment to ourselves, loading the level. So if we run it now, nothing actually happens, but we don't get an error, which means that it is successfully loading the image. If you do get an error and you get like a null pointer exception error down here, that means that it's, it's not finding the correct file that you've put. So make sure you have this forward slash. Make sure you added the folder as a class folder in the properties here. And make sure that the file is actually in it and that it's called level.png and uh, or, or level and it's got the PNG extension and you're calling it the exact same. So you know if I had an uppercase L here and I try to run it. Oh, that, hold on, that's a bad example. Let's just do this. And there you go. So now we get this error and actually here let me let me run it again just so I can see if we can get an error here. Yep, there we go. So this is the error you might find, you know, input equals equals null. Again, that, that's because you're not properly loading the image. But if we just run it like this, everything is fine and it's loading properly. All right, so now that we've loaded the image, we're going to need to actually uh, use, use that image, you know. So right now it's just sitting there, not really doing anything, and we want to create the level for it. So right off the bat, I'm just going to comment out handler.create level and comment out handler.add object. So if we run the game now, we should get nothing. Yep. So we're going to create a new method within our game class here. All right. And it's going to be called private void load image level. And it's going to take a buffered image parameter 
of image. And this is going to be the level that we're going to use. So we're going to create two variables real quick. Int, uh, int w equals image dot get width. So this now, we are now getting the width and height of our image that we imported into our parameter here. So now that we got this, we can basically, um, or here, you know what, let's, let's just do this just so I can show you guys. So system.out.println width height. And then we're going to plus w plus h. And then let's go ahead and up here. load image level level or uh, load image level there you go so now if we run it as you can see we get height width and height 512 512 which is the proper dimensions so it is reading it correctly uh, all that fun stuff works so now what we're gonna do is we basically now need to decipher what pixel we're on and all that fun stuff so we're going to run a double for loop. So for int xx equals zero, xx is less than height, xx plus plus. All right, and now we're gonna create another one inside that. So for int yy equals zero, yy is less than width, yy plus plus. So what we're doing right here is basically we're gonna be looping through every single pixel of our image, right? Um, with the proper uh, dimensions. So here we're going to create an integer pixel and this is going to equal image dot get RGB XX -Y -Y. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create an int red, whoops, an int green and an int blue. And these are going these integers are going to hold the value of which our current pixel uh, what what the exact color of the current pixel is on so here we're going to say red equals pixel and we're going to use a, a bit operator here now I'm not a hundred percent sure how these work exactly I know that they're shifting binary uh, code and numbers uh, I don't want to give you wrong information on that, so I'm just going to have you copy the code here, and you can basically uh, look that up yourself. So we're going to do pixel with the bit operator 16, and and then this is a hexadecimal value here. So then for green, we're just going to say pixel, and instead of 16, we're going to say 8, and we're going to do the same thing. So and 0xff. And then for blue, we're just going to say pixel without using a bit operator and then 0xff. There you go. So this code successfully gets what pixel we're on and um, gets the RGB values. So now all we have to say is if red equals equals 255, because that is our uh, that's the max in the color spectrum. Uh, if red equals 255 and green equals 255 and blue equals 255, we now know that we are looking at a white pixel color, which is what our blocks are. So with that being said, we can now say handler dot add object new block. And then it's been a while. Let's see what are parameters x, y, and, and id. So we're going to say uh, our xx multiplied by 32, yy multiplied by 32, and then object id dot block. So if we go and run the game now, as you can see, we now get an entire level loaded for us just like that so it does in fact work that is pretty cool um, it doesn't actually go all the way down so here let's add another another layer here do, 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 do. so we save it just like that we save it and we run the game it's already updated fully and there you go so now I must have miscounted one 
Um, so now we can just copy this really paste it down again and instead of red equaling 255 and green equal equaling 255 we're just checking if if it's a blue pixel now instead of spawning a block we spawn a player object ID dot player and uh, we also need handler here and we run it and as you can see our, our player spawns exactly where we had it spawn right there so now we've got an entire level that we just created um, quite easily and you can just pop into paint you can have this on your other monitor if that's what you do and you can completely change the level um, super super quickly and really as much as you want I mean I can make this a scrambled level save it run the game and now check this out it, it's completely uh, or it's very very um, easy to work with so go leave a like go and subscribe and we just kind of glitched out of there but we'll, we'll fix that in later tutorials so go leave a like go and subscribe let's try for 100 likes this time this is a method that I tried to look for for a while and finally got it and now passing it on to you guys go leave a like go and subscribe 100 likes and show your support or this support, if that's a word. Alright, see ya. Peace.